Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a $250 Walmart laptop to see if it would be worth picking something like this up. Now, the first thing you might be thinking is this is a gateway laptop. I thought they were out of business. And a couple months ago, I actually thought the same thing. But it looks like Walmart may have acquired the brand and they've been selling a ton of these gateway laptops. I did a review on one with an 11th gen i5 CPU that turned out to be a pretty decent bargain. So I figured we'd go ahead and test out one of the cheaper ones coming in at a $250 price tag. Now this was in stock at my local Walmart. Most of them are stocking these gateway laptops now. And in this video, we're going to see if it would be worth picking one of these up for school, work, gaming, or even emulation. So inside of the box, you're obviously going to get the laptop itself and a 25 watt wall charger. This is basically all we got in there besides a few manuals. Taking a look at the I.O. over here on the left hand side, we have our power input, USB 3.0 and full size HDMI out. Moving over to the right hand side, we have another USB 3.0 port, a headphone jack, micro SD card reader and USB type C. Unfortunately, this USB type C jack cannot be used for display out. So what are we really getting here for $250? When it comes down to it, the CPU is an Intel Pentium Silver N5030. This is a quad-core CPU up to 3.1 gigahertz. The GPU is the Intel UHD605 up to 750 megahertz. Four gigabytes of LPDDR4. It's soldered to the board, so it's non-user replaceable or upgradable at 2400 megahertz. 128 gigabytes of internal storage. Plus, it does have a 2.5 inch bay, so we can install a mechanical or an SSD drive in here if you needed to. A 15.6 inch IPS display at 1080p. And it's running Windows 10 S, but it's easily upgradable to Windows 10 Home for free. So it's definitely not a top-of-the-line laptop for $250, but, you know, the price reflects that. I have tested a similar PC in the past with that N5030. It was actually a Dell unit, and it worked out pretty well for the price, so I'm hoping that we can get some decent performance out of this also. So the first thing I wanted to do was just pull the bottom off to take a look at if there was any upgradability at all, and unfortunately, the only thing that we can add or change here is a 2.5-inch drive. I would highly recommend using an SSD here, given the lower power requirements. But another thing you might notice are the fingerprints in here. This is not from me. As soon as I pulled this off, I noticed the fingerprints on the copper plate. And by the way, this is a passively cooled PC, so there's no fan whatsoever in here. Alright, so here we are. I spent a little time with this. I've installed a bunch of applications that we're going to try to test out here. And I do want to mention that this did come with Windows 10 in S mode, but it's really easy to switch over to home. All you need to do is go to the Microsoft Store and you can switch out to home so we're no longer in S with this one here. As you can see, we have that quad-core Pentium Silver N5030, 4 gigabytes of RAM, and this is soldered to the board. It's LPDDR4 at 2400 megahertz, and the built-in UHD605 graphics. So going into this, CPU performance really wasn't as bad as I thought it was. I was checking out uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. It's got Bluetooth 4.0 built-in, and this actually got me thinking. That's a lower version of Bluetooth when it comes to, you know, a PC released in 2021. So I went over to the device manager and I checked out the built-in wireless card, it's only in. It will not pick up 5 gigahertz. I was really surprised by this. I mean, I haven't seen this in a while, and I'm going to tell you right now, this is going to be one of the main downsides to buying a PC like this. In the past, I've picked up cheaper laptops when they're on sale, let's say Black Friday from Lenovo and even Dell, and they do have AC Wi-Fi built-in. In my opinion, this is actually pretty crazy to only throw in Wi-Fi in here. Now, uh, if we go to our Wi-Fi networks, we can't pick up any 5 gigahertz network. So we're working with 2.4 gigahertz on this unit. And it really does make a big difference in internet speed. I mean, as long as you have a decent internet connection at the house, you should be running on a 5 gigahertz network. At my place, I average around 350 megabits per second when I'm over Ethernet or a good AC Wi-Fi connection. But with this here, after a few tries, I averaged right at 39 down and 21 up. I mean, this is way down from my other devices that do have AC Wi-Fi built in, and it will show when you're trying to download something or even stream high-quality content. With this here, we're going to be very limited, but I still wanted to just, you know, open up a web browser, check out some YouTube video playback, just see how fast everything loads. And uh, just head over to YouTube. As you can see, it does take a second to load in, but we'll go with a 4K video, but we're only going to be running at 1080 with this. Just go with the demo real quick. We'll go full screen. Stats for nerds. We're at 720, but we're going to take it up to 1080. 
and just see how well it can stream some YouTube. Now I've tested this chip in the past and I actually had pretty good luck with it. It was in a Dell laptop and it was actually a fan laptop so it wasn't passively cooled and it was actually able to keep up with those boost clocks. So I really didn't have to worry about thermal throttling and we'll take a look at that in a second but I want to let this play through a little bit. If you take a look at stats for nerves, we're running this at 1080p 60, we got 19 drop frames, not bad at all, this is something I would never notice, I mean it does play 1080p video back really really well. But after about 7 to 9 minutes of video playback from YouTube, this laptop starts to thermal throttle. We have no fan built in, it's got a little tiny copper plate over that CPU like we saw with the quick teardown, and it does get quite hot, so what happens is it reaches its thermal limit and then it starts taking that CPU speed down to cool itself off. And just to give you an idea, we're 7 minutes into the video. Over here, we've already hit 101 degrees Celsius. It's around 81 on average. Uh, goes up to around 90 every once in a while I've seen it jump up to. But just from playing this 1080p video, we did hit thermal throttle on this N5030. I did run a couple benchmarks, nothing too heavy duty because after all, I mean, that's a very low end chip we have in here. First up, we have Geekbench 5, single core coming in with a 498 Multi 1501. I mean, this is looking on par with the 4125 at 2.7 GHz, so I was hoping to get a little more out of it. The next benchmark I ran was 3D Mark Wildlife. This is just a Vulcan GPU benchmark. We got a 370 on this, and with those built in UHD 605 graphics running at up to 750 megahertz, it's really not that bad, but it has nothing on the new Intel XE graphics or even the Ryzen Vega graphics. Jumping right into a little bit of light gaming, here we have Minecraft. This is the Windows Store version. 10 chunks, no filtering, it runs pretty well, and I kind of expected it would. Even on the lower end 4100 chips, I've had really good luck with this at around 8 chunks. And we were able to take this up to 10, but I think we could get a bit more out of it if we weren't thermal throttling, which we're definitely doing at the time of playing this game here. I don't usually test this game on x86 PCs, but it was on the front page of the Microsoft Store, so I figured I'd go ahead and download it. This is more of a mobile game for your Android device, and I thought we'd get way better performance out of it, but even at the lowest settings here, we're only getting an average of around 40 FPS. I was for sure that this would run at 60 FPS at 720p, but unfortunately, it just won't. So you know I had to test out a little bit of emulation on this device, and first up we have Dreamcast using the Redream emulator. It doesn't take much to run this, and we're getting really great performance, even with a harder one to run with this emulator, which is DOA2. I did run through a couple matches just to make sure we didn't hit thermal throttle and everything kind of fall on its face, and with Dreamcast it worked out fine. But when it comes to PSP, I did notice some issues. So here's the standalone version of PPSSPP. We have Ghost of Sparta running, 1x resolution, Vulcan back in. It's looking pretty good here, we're at 60. But about two minutes into gameplay with Ghost of Sparta, I started to notice that it would drop down to around 52 to 54 and then jump back up. Basically what's happening here is that CPU is reaching its thermal throttle limit and trying to cool itself down. And the same thing happened with GameCube. Now even with this chip here running at full boat with all the cooling we can throw at it, it's not going to run every single GameCube game at full speed. But there are some easier games to emulate that actually run pretty decently on the N5030, like Soul Calibur 2 here. But unfortunately, with no active cooling on the CPU, it's really hard pressed to run this at 60. So going into this, I was really hoping that I'd see better performance out of this laptop. I know it's a cheaper laptop, but I did have good luck with the other gateway I tested with that 1135G7. It was actually a decent performer for the price, and if we could have had active cooling on this CPU here, and AC Wi-Fi built in, this might have been worth the money. But the way it sits right now, with that CPU hitting thermal throttle, even watching YouTube videos, and only 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi built in, this is something you should probably stay away from. I did plan on doing more testing with this laptop. You know, on paper it did look like a pretty decent deal, but getting in there and seeing how it performs, it's just really not worth going any further with it. So that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. Was hoping that this thing would be worth that $250 price tag, but unfortunately the way they have it set up right now, it's definitely not. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.